hello and welcome to this beautiful park where we are gathered to remember Lady Mildred Louise Thomas on this anniversary of her birthday, June 18th. We gather in a spirit of appreciation. We offer appreciation to Christina, who looked into the possibilities of meeting mom's final wishes, to have her ashes scattered where her sister's prayers had been scattered before her. We offer appreciation to Sally, who is housing out of town guests and is putting up with the chaos that that implies. We offer appreciation to all of us who could attend today. And we think also of those who can't be here today. We especially remember Ivan Jarek and Thomas Pyatt, her sons and their wives. Please join me in offering up appreciation to God for this glorious day and for the pleasure of knowing Lady Mildred Louise Thomas. We bow our heads and pray the Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. But lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. Listen to one of my mom's favorite hymns. Read these words by David Parkins. She is gone. You can shed tears that she is gone, or you can smile because she has lived. You can close your eyes and pray that she will come back, or you can open your eyes and see all that she has left. Your heart can be empty because you can't see it. <clears throat> or you can be full of the love that you shared. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday, or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember her and only that she is gone, or you can cherish her memory and let it live on. You can cry and close your mind, be empty and turn your back, or you can do what she would want, smile, open your eyes, love, and go on. I'm just gonna keep reading. Mm -hmm. This is the eulogy that Chrissy wrote for her. Um, it's her obituary. Mildred Millie Louise Thomas, age 93, went home to be with our Lord on Wednesday, January 4th, 2022, surrounded by her family. She was born at home in Pennsylvania to William and Sarah. After Millie graduated from Baldwin High School, she continued her education throughout her life, primarily in writing. She started her first job in a bank as a courier, and later worked for most of her adult life as a high-speed typist, a job she enjoyed and excelled at. In her life, she had visited almost every state in the Union, including Alaska and Hawaii. Millie wanted more than anything else in her life to be a mother. She loved being a mom. She will be desperately missed by her kids, who were also her best friends, Thomas, Rebecca, Christina and Ivan Jr. She is also survived by great grandchild Jeremy and grandchildren Michelle and Gwyneth, sons in law Kirk and Kevin, daughter in law Anne Marie, and daughter in law Willie. Millie also leaves behind two orange kitties, her cherished her boys, Boots the Bold and Sir Puss. And while Sally isn't mentioned traditionally, Sally was one of her first mm -hmm. And it's was Gia, I remember saying. Oh, oh yeah, and Gia, thank you. Mm -hmm. Millie loved reading all of her life, primarily fantasy and science fiction, but she also led an adventurous life. She was the first secretary of the Explorers Club of Pittsburgh and active with the club, climbing, river running, caving, and camping. This was also in the early 60s, before it was cool. And she was always up for any road trip or adventure with her kids, taking road trips all across the country and the trip of a lifetime to Scotland. Her children bought her land in Scotland for Christmas 2022, even bought her a piece of property and so added the term lady to her name. Millie visited almost every step. She was a brownie and a Girl Scout leader and was active with various women's groups and animal shelters throughout her lifetime. Millie would leave you with these words, live long and prosper. 
We will share our grief by sharing memories of our time with Millie. Some stories will be short and others not as long as they would have been. Some may choose to pass when it is their turn. As speak, people speak, you may wish to reach out, offer a tissue or a supportive word. Please hold that urge until the speaker is finished so that they can finish. Can I go first or Michelle and I can switch places? Yes. Okay. So uh, this is a poem that me and my friend AI wrote last night. It's like a lot of poetry. In the quiet corners of my heart, you reside, a mother cherished with love that abides. In books and tales, you found solace and delight, words your companions through day and night. And oh, how you loved your kitties, each one cherished soul. In their soft purrs and playful pounces, your heart found its console. Together we ventured on trips far and wide, creating memories, precious and dear. Your fudge was magic, a taste of love's embrace. Each bat, a sweet memory, a comforting space. Though time has passed and distance has grown, your spirit lingers in whispers of known. You were more than a mother, you were dear friends, our bond unbreakable through twists and bends. So here's to you, dear mother of mine, with fudge sweet memories so divine. Until we meet again beyond the blue, I'll hold you close and always miss you. Mm -hmm. What would you read the Mine Angel with on that? Yeah. All right, this poem uh, is by Maya Angelou and it's called When Great Trees Fall. When great trees fall, rocks on distant hills shudder. Lions hunker down in tall grasses, and even elephants lumber after safety. When great trees fall in forests, small things recoil into silence, their senses eroded beyond fear. When great souls die, the air around us becomes light, rare, sterile. We breathe briefly, briefly. our eyes briefly see with a hurtful clarity. Our memory suddenly sharpened, examines, gnaws on kind words unsaid, promise, walks, never taken. Great souls die in our reality, bound to them, takes leave of us. Our souls, dependent upon their nurture, now shrink, wizened. Our minds, formed and informed by their radiance, fall away. We are not so much maddened as reduced to the unutterable ignorance of dark, cold, and when great souls die after a period, peace blooms, slowly and always irregularly. Spaces fill with a kind of soothing electric vibration. Our senses restored, never to be the same, whisper to us. They existed. They existed. We can be, be and be better, for they existed. Um, Kirk did send um, some words, but he also sent photos of where he um, scattered her ashes in Scotland, and um, a, a bagpipe uh, was playing in Scotland, of course, and he had that, and um, I think he even has the, uh, when he scattered her ashes, there, uh, there was a, um, a, pus, a father and daughter uh, performing, and um, we have that. So I'm going to write all of this up together, in, including what Chrissy has, put it in a big package, so you'll be able to see these things. But I will, I'm going to try, and I'll bring my phone over, to read the words that he had. He loved her like a mother. Oh, I have it. This is from Kirk. I journeyed to Scotland, bringing with me Millie's ashes. I was looking for the right place and laid her ashes in the flowers and the wind by the National Gallery with views of the sea and the castle of Edinburgh Toe, near the Scott Memorial. At the exact moment, the father-daughter team was singing, teach your children well, and who knows where the time goes. The church encouraged, quote, instead of a prayer candle, pull a tiny boat for a prayer or for someone you love, like the boat that carried St. Columba to Scotland. I floated a half acorn carrot with a tiny sail on a baptismal font the church is St. Columba by the castle. I think she loved it there. Um, this is a poem by Christina Rossetti called Let Me Go. 
When I come to the end of the road and the sun has set for me, I want no rights in a gloom-filled room. Why cry for a soul set free? Miss me a little, but not for long, and not with your head bowed low. Remember the love that once we shared. Miss me, but let me go. For this is a journey we all must take, and each must go alone. It's all part of the master plan, a step on the road to home. When you are lonely and sick at heart, go to the friends we know. Laugh at all the things we used to do. Miss me, but let me go. These are the words that Van sent um, to, uh, for this thing. He's also, he's also lit a candle at home for the duration of the um, service. This is Van's words. Hey mom, I miss you. You were the very best of moms, 100% always there and 100% always forgiving. I will miss seeing you when I get home from work when you visited, sitting on my couch reading a fantasy book. I also will miss our long drives to Amish country <clears throat> and Vermilion. I am thankful to you for the wonderful life I have because of the loving upbringing <clears throat> you gave me. And I am looking forward to the long, love-filled and happy life and then seeing your warm face again, riding a dragon on Pern and <clears throat> reading a fantasy book. <clears throat> Would you like to say a word? I miss you, Grandma, with all my heart. And I miss the times together. Mm. Thank you. The journey started. One day I got a phone call and a woman asked me if my birth name was Robert Earl Thomas. I said yes, which did confuse me some. The lady asked, is your name Thomas Piot? I said yes. She said, I'm your sister. I told her, no, you aren't. My sister died about four years ago. The lady said, no, I'm your blood sister, Chris. Do you want to speak to mom? Well, by now, my wife was dancing in the living room. The journey started again. I learned I had a brother, two sisters, and a mom. I was named after her brother, Earl. I was English, Irish, and Shoshone, and I had lots of people that I was related to. The journey had started again. To my sister, Chris, who did not give up and found me, and to my mother, who is my mother through DNA and through my bushy eyebrows, a love of reading science fiction novels, and a dislike of broccoli. <laughs> I don't really remember how it started, but I started writing stories for mom, and she enjoyed them. I called them Bob the Toad stories. And this is a, this is a selection from that. Maybe if Bob the Toad grew wings, but he had never seen a toad with wings, but that did not mean he would not eventually grow wings. When he was a tadpole, he did not have legs. Maybe later he would grow wings. Every morning he would check. Maybe wings today? No, no wings. Well, he would check tomorrow, though. Maybe then. That would be his personal dream. He would wonder about the rest of his life. Maybe if he grew wings, he could get a large leaf and make a little cape and be the scourge of the flying tasties faster than a falling acorn, more powerful than a rolling donut. donut. Bob was not sure what a rolling donut was, but it sounded powerful. Just think, he'd be able to fly faster than all the tasties in the great blue. It's Bob, the tasty eater. And that is when Bob saw it in his reflection in the pond. Something was on top of his head, something golden. Bob tried to brush it off, but it was stuck to his head. He looked closer and it looked like a small golden crown. Bob realized not only was he a toad, he was royalty. He was King Toad. And not only that, he was responsible for all that he surveyed in the tall green inside the tall wire under the great blue, Bob had found his home. I remember listening to mom. I remember mom listening to long stories like that almost every day when Tom called and she would laugh. She asked this next song to be played. She asked for this next song. <laughs> it's um, by the Andrews Sisters, and it's the strip polka. It's coming.
song because we're freezing. So could you turn it off? And the whole song will be in the um, great service that you'll get. Would you like to share some words? Yeah, nearly to my brothers and I was a, a kind of a magical, glamorous moment. She would come out to visit the farm. She would bring special gifts, and she was so gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, is um, I even had some of her pictures. Do you have Heather? Maybe, but if I don't, I won't. Okay. Anyhow, and then um, then as she grew older, you know, it, it was great to keep in touch. You know, and then but when she really became close is when after you know she separated and uh, could come out and spend real time with us, and that she was an amazing listener which was one of the things that uh, I love most about Thank you for sharing that for us. We're near the end of the service. There's a few more things to hear. <clears throat> There's, um, yeah, just a few more things. Um, and when we're done with the words, we're all going to wait for them to get out of the way, and then we'll walk up and scatter the ashes, those who wish to use that. <clears throat> this is the final poem. It's by Margaret Mead. It's called, Do Not Weep For Me. Do not weep for me, for I have not gone. I am the wind that shakes the mighty oak. I am the gentle rain that falls upon your face. I am the spring flower that pushes through the dark earth. I am the chuckling laughter of the mountain stream. Do not weep for me, for I have not gone. I am the memory that dwells in the heart of those that knew me. I am the shadow that dances on the edge of your vision. I am the wild goose that flies south at autumn's call and I shall return at summer rising. I am the stag on the wild hill's way. I am just around the corner. Therefore, the wise weep not, but rejoice at the transformation of my being. We came together today to say goodbye to Millie. Now, um, before we go scatter her ashes, where Claire's ashes were scattered, we're here going to just take a quiet moment to reflect on our final goodbye to the earthly remains of Millie. And we're going to listen to a little bit of We Boat Home, which was one of her favorite songs. I dragged her to the Unitarian Universalist Church for a while, um, and this was one of her favorite songs. Again, I'm going to speak over the song, and it'll, the whole thing will be on the other page. I know my mom would be glad that we came to her memorial. And so I brought her collection of glass kisses. If you know my mom, you know she wasn't into kissing or hugging much. Oh, yeah. No, she I wasn't. Older, I'm hugging her now. I know. <laughs> well, you were special, baby. But she had a collection of glass kisses because she loved chocolate. Um, and I brought her kisses, and I'm going to pass them out. Uh, they're in little bags, so you won't know what they look like until you take one. Um, know also that my sister will be sending each of us memorial wind chimes. Um, at, they'll come in the mail, and then at the end, both of us will get together and, and write up the service so that you can see it again. that way if the people are still at the thing right there's gonna be people coming and going we'll just get fit in okay. keep your phone forward and choose one yeah. shelly would you take mine for me please
<laughs> We've come together to say goodbye to Millie, to return her ashes to the earth. We've shared our thoughts, we will scatter her ashes, and then we will leave this place to continue the lives that Millie would want us to have. Thank you all for coming. Go in peace. Or as we like to say in our family, live long and prosper. <laughs> So let's go to um, the edge where we're going to scatter the ashes. And I are here where Aunt Claire was scattered. And we're going to do a little memorial to Aunt Claire now. It's a beautiful area. Okay, Mom. Right. Hmm? Say whatever you want to say. Uh. I miss you. Aw. Well, I can't say much more. Okay. And then I have a little pine cone of my own. So far it rolls down there. So a little tree will be planted there. Hmm? Little tree will be planted there.